Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now I want you to know that this is that atmosphere where everything is possible. The Bible says that the Lord is in the midst of thee, mighty to deliver, mighty to save. This is that atmosphere. If your faith can be stirred tonight, I believe that God is going to speak to you. God is going to touch your heart. Things will shift in the name of Jesus. Things will shift in the name of Jesus. Listen, the mighty hand of God that has brought healing to others, that has strengthened others and granted them testimonies. I speak today in the name of Jesus by the authority of the Spirit. Desires and expectations. Things that are written down in your answered prayer slips. The Bible says, surely there is an end and the expectation of the righteous will not be cut short. I declare your expectation will not be cut short. Amen. Your desires will be granted in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. We have come to the new Jerusalem. We have gathered together to the company of innumerable angels and to the spirit of just men made perfect. We have come to the blood of the covenant. The blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. And so I declare this evening, everything that has defied all methods of approach by the hand of the Lord in his presence tonight, I declare there is testimonies breaking forth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Testimonies are breaking forth in the name of Jesus. Amen. In one minute of one minute, 30 seconds, I want you to lift up your voice sincerely tonight and say, God, speak to me. Speak to me. Speak to me. Speak to me. I want you to lift up your voice today and say, Lord, speak to my heart. 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 Rapo na manaka ba yaga ba sonde lebo shana gaga 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 gaga. Rate ne monaka ba yandesh. Can you say, God, speak to my heart? Let the entrance of your word bring light. Let it bring life and understanding to me. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be your holy name tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please sit up in heavenly places tonight. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor left and right. Tell them tonight, God has a word for you. Tell your neighbor, say tonight, your word. The word for your lifting. The word for your change of levels. The word for your total transformation. Will come to you tonight. You will find direction. You will gain insight. Blood visions. Will become clear. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Look at your neighbor left and right. Tell that person welcome to church. I'm glad to see you. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Want to appreciate everyone for making our time. And those of us who have been going the extra mile to ensure that you keep inviting your family, your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues, and all the people around you. I want to believe that nobody, not a single person has come here 
you know in the course of this meeting that has regretted it all the people you know from the testimonies that i get they have encountered god and people are encountering god and it's just the beginning hallelujah and as we move on as we climax it will continue to get better in the name of jesus quickly tonight i just want to speak briefly before pastor gideon comes in amen amen i want to share with us briefly before pastor gideon comes in now listen what i am about to share with you now if you pay attention to it it is practically impossible for you to fail what i'm about to share with you right now if you pay attention to it it has the capacity to give a quantum leap to your life so many people are victims of what i'm about to share tonight i told you there are things i want to share i've not even started getting into the points concerning the things about dealing with foundations and all that but today i want to share something on the part of wisdom so i want you to pay attention are you ready for some dose of wisdom and as this wisdom is coming god is going to cause a stirring in your spirit so that you would rise up and do the things that god will have you do this season i didn't hear you say a louder amen Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 15 to 16. I'm going to be speaking on the subject overcoming the distractions of life. Overcoming the distractions of life. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. What I'm about to share with you today is the distinguishing factor between fools and wise people. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Can you give me another translation on this? NIV. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are what? Wise. Are you ready tonight? Don't live like fools. You know why? The Bible says that the labor of a fool weary at all of them because the fool does not know how to go into the city. The fool does not understand how to live life at its fullest, at its best, to get optimal results. So the Bible says we should be careful not to live as fools. Do not live like them, said, but like those who are wise. That's how you should live. Then the next verse says what? make the most of every opportunity in these evil days another translation maybe tbt or any other one let's just look at it verse 16 there status is changing no more decline i'm on my way to better days Status is chain, no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Overcoming the distractions of life. A distraction is anything that stops you from gaining traction write it down anything that stops you from gaining traction two words distraction anything that stops you from gaining traction distraction is something that prevents someone from seeing what is before them If I stand here and I desire to see something that is very far, 
if anything is in front of me and will not allow me to see what's on the other side, that thing is called what? Distraction. Distractions will not allow people to see the vision before them. Distractions will not allow people to press into the fullness of the life that God has ordained for them. Distractions will not allow people to fulfill the purpose of God for their lives. Why? The goal of every distraction is to stop you from fulfilling your purpose. The goal of every distraction is to render a person useless. The goal of every distraction is to ensure that you while away time, waste your productive years and end up a very foolish old person. After all is said and done, those who are fraternized with all the distractions of life, they will come to the zero point in life. There will be nothing to show for it. And it is quite unfortunate that so many people are caught in the web of distractions. So many people are caught in the, especially in today's world, people are caught in massive webs of distraction, web of distractions. The moment you decide to pursue your dreams, a distraction will show up. Haven't you seen that the day you decide you're going to take up a fast 14 day series to break certain things? That season you start feeling somehow in your stomach upset. You just begin to I cannot fast. This that's a distraction. The moment you make up your mind that this is 2024, I will live the best of my life, I will do this. Everything, all is as if all hell will be loosed against you. Why? The goal of the devil, John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's the assignment of the devil. The moment you decide to be a better husband, that's when your wife will raise all manner of things. That's when you will now start seeing all the faults in life. The day you decide to become a better wife, that's when the devil will do everything to make sure that you are pissed off by your husband, by the father, everything. They are distractions. The day you decide to be committed to your purpose in life and arise and become all that God has said you will be, child of God, distractions will come. Satan is called Beelzebub, And the meaning of the word Beelzebub is what? The Lord of flies. You know flies? And what's the common thing that flies do? They distract you. He's called the Lord of the flies. The Lord of the flies. So many people are distracted by multiple flies in their lives. There are so many things they have left. Just imagine a person driving on high speed and all of a sudden a fly begins to pose everywhere. You'll be distracted, true or false. If care is not taken and you fail to focus, the fly begins to come close to your eye. It comes everywhere. If care is not taken, anything can happen. That's the plan of the devil. Especially when he knows that you are embarking on a journey to that glorious life that God has ordained for you. As soon as the devil sees that you have set your heart to become everything that God has ordained, he begins to bring all manner of distractions from all corners. Listen, if the enemy cannot destroy you at once with death, he will try to distract you from reaching the purpose of your life. Distractions are Satan's tools to stop believers from achieving everything that God has ordained them for. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, the Bible says that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus. We were created to do good works. Just imagine, every believer is created to do what? Good works. Every believer has a deposit of the good works that God has ordained that you will do right inside of you. But the devil knows that if I cannot hit this person with death, at least I must do something to ensure that they will live a life that is near death and frustration. That they will get to a point where they will look at their God and say, what kind of God is it that we're serving? Nothing is working in my life. Distractions will come everywhere. At the point some people get so distracted, they begin to question God and ask if God really does exist. It's the devil that brings all that. Distractions are Satan's tools to keep the believer from achieving what God wants them to achieve. And why? Because the devil knows that we live in the dispensation of time. Somebody say time. Somebody say time. And time is life. Time is what? Time is what? If you're wasting your time, you're wasting your what? Life. The goal of distraction is to make you waste your time and indirectly waste your what? Life. Please pay attention. If you get what I'm saying today and you start a journey, I guarantee you in the name of Jesus, no devil has the ability to stop you. Focus creates blindness. When you meet a person who is focused, there is nothing they cannot achieve in life. 
The Bible says in Genesis chapter 6 about the, the Torah of Babel. It said, this that they have set their heart to do. This that they have set their heart to do. God himself said that the way these guys are focused and they are willing, they are not distracted. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one and they have one language. And this that they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Every organization that is focused will go far. Anytime you see a ministry advancing, it is the power of focus. Anytime you see a person making waves, there is focus. There is something that they have decided to focus on. They have avoided distraction. Paul said, I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling. I count every other thing but what? Dung. So that I will obtain that for which Christ has held on to me. Jesus called me. There's something he would have me do for me to get into that level in life. Paul said, I press. I count every other thing but don't. I put them aside. All my past achievements. Sometimes your distraction is the first class you got. Not knowing that there are higher classes in life. Something good today can be a distraction tomorrow. And that's why you have to be very careful. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. In other words, you don't have all the time in this life to do anything. There is a time a portion to achieve certain things. There is a time a portion to hit certain marks. If the devil succeeds to distract you from that time, you probably have to wait for another season or you will have to wait for another lifetime that will never come. Many people are where they are today. They are living in the pit of their regrets. All the things they thought they would have done with their lives. Everything they thought they would have done. Satan has succeeded to distract them, face, distract them rather, face upon face, line upon line. And somewhere along the line, they got to a point and they said to themselves, I don't even have strength to do anything more. Can I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice? Every satanic distraction, every demonic distraction, every distraction that is organized by the pit of hell to take you out of the track of your purpose, your calling, and render you useless. I declare in the name of Jesus, you will never be caught in the web of destruction. I say you will never be caught in the web of destruction. In the name of Jesus. Time waits for no man, the devil knows. And he knows that when a person is distracted, as they are facing that thing that has stopped them from gaining traction, time continues to move. Time continues to move. Time continues to move. And the longer he succeeds to distract you, the more wasted years accumulated. And he knows that your life on earth is but for a moment. If you have 50 years of impact, and Satan succeeds to take 40 years, what will be left of you? Is anybody get what I'm saying here right now? Please listen to me tonight. What I'm sharing with you tonight, it can change your life forever. If you, it can change your life forever. Oh, pastor, ah, this thing you're doing, you're always, you're always in this, you're Iba, Iba, you don't come out, I'm not going anywhere. My place of assignment is more important to me. Many have been distracted. I shared with you a friend that traveled and followed a particular woman that promised him heaven and earth and ministry, money and everything. And by the time they went and came back, the church had closed. As I speak right now, he's struggling for the past six years thereabout to build and gather 60 people. That's become a headache. And the time I visited that place, there were over 100 already. Distractions. Is anybody get what I'm saying tonight? I went to preach somewhere, and when I got there to preach, in that meeting, KGL meeting was there. They invited me. They invited a, a man who had, you know, gone through series of things in his life, and a particular woman also. The man was caught in the web of drug addiction. They put him in the Nigerian police force. He started, because of the serious level of drug, you know, involvement, they withdrew him from there. He could not cope, and he continued his life. A young man, he said he started his life as a very promising young man at the age of, that if he had continued the way he was going, because he entered the military just about 25, he was already doing a lot of things. That if he had continued, by the time he would be 40, he would have hit a lot of man. At the, the day he was speaking to us, the day the man was speaking to us, they just succeeded to finish his rehabilitation. And at the age of 55, 56, they are teaching him how to do shoemaker. I don't know how many shoes he will make in his life. He spent from that 25 years, 26, 27, drug hooked him by 30. From 30 to about 53, that's about 23 years of a man's life. He was caught in the web of drug addiction. By the time he came out, 
Have you been? Have you have you seen the movie? There's a movie I saw some time ago. I don't know that movie. They got distracted in a particular city where they were catching fun at night, Los Angeles. It was Los Angeles in that movie, and they got distracted. Why they were in that place? By the time they came out, many years had passed. I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice. May it not be possible for devil to catch you in the web of distraction. May the Lord give you wisdom to break out of every web of distraction. In the name of Jesus. Now, that man was sharing testimony and saying, well, I want to thank God because they brought him to share testimony with us, you know, and, uh, and I came here. And my own part to share is to tell people how to live a productive, youthful life. Hey! Solomon said, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. And he said, youth life is vanity. When I got to the scripture, I marked it. I said, youth life is impact. Yes, but the glory of the youth is in their strength. If I meet Solomon face to face, it will be a different ball game. I will tell him, your youth life was vanity. Mine was impact. There's a difference. There's a difference. Because he wandered away from the truth. He wandered away from everything. He wandered away. Seriously. He would have done great. If you know what God had ordained for Solomon really and where he reached. Many of us are celebrating so much. But sometimes you do not know the heights that God really ordained for you and where you are. And where distraction has kept you. By the hand of the Lord. Anyone that is caught in any satanic distraction and web that has vowed that you will have a wasted life. I pick by the hand of the Lord. I declare you are picked out of that distraction. Please give me some volume. I need to hear myself. For the path of the just is a burning light. It shines how? Brighter and brighter. And that only works by the power of what? Focus. If you must live a productive and glorious life, you must learn to intentionally avoid distractions. Distractions can come in various forms, shapes, and sizes. I'm going to share a few of them with you today, hopefully before Pastor Gideon comes in. Number one. Come on today is social media distraction. Write it down. This has become a major pandemic. And I'm very sure that apart from the pleasure of surfing the internet and gathering information and socializing, Satan has an agenda to distract as many as possible and waste their life on social media. During the course of the meeting, you know, Pastor Yemi came around, my mentor came around, and after everything, another friend called me and he was telling me. He said, Did you see what they posted? So, oh, Pastor Yemi posted you on in Twitter, posted you on this. Well, I said, I didn't see it. Because I'm not there. Not now. Not now. I'm not on X. Instagram is working, I don't know what's happening there. Facebook, I don't know what's happening there. Why? It takes a focused life to gain traction. There is time for everything. There is time for everything. There is time for everything. I know that I do not have so much time again. I know very well, like I know myself, that time continues to tick. Tick, says the clock. Tick, tick. What you have to do. Because a stitch in time saves now. Those common, uh, what do you call it now? Uh, 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 figures of whatever they call it, whatever we call them again, idiomatic and whatever, the, all the things you call them. It's not all, whatever they call them, doesn't matter. I just said it already. 27% of young adults say that social media is what they use to avoid doing real work. Just spending time there is what, in order not to do real work, I just hook up on social media. Social media distraction can reduce a person's ability to focus in life by 40%. Statistics. It doesn't lie. I, I did my work well. Social media distraction has been, the tra have been traced to the reason for low academic performance among students. Social media. The, the people who want to get, get uh, first class, go and look at them. The way you are doing the social media is not the way they are doing. I know them. One of my boys in Caleb Kele, uh, University years, years ago, I mentored them. He wrote a book and he brought for me and he said, first class, no be beans. I'll be first class, whichever way he wrote the book, in order to express his journey to getting to that point. The height attained by great men was not a sudden flight. While their contemporaries are busy fraternizing, arguing, and making noise, they are gaining traction. Somebody under the sound of my voice, you will start gaining traction. The wisdom to move to the next level will rest upon your life. 
in the name of Jesus. Social media has been traced again to the reason why many couples are falling apart in their marriage to them. The man is here like this. The woman is there like this. The baby is there entering fire. And they're not aware. Distraction. Learn to shut down social media and take a break. Or else it will steal your future. You are paying for distraction each time you sit on social media doing nothing. You are paying for distraction. You are sponsoring your distraction. <laughs> you can imagine somebody paying. Pay. And you say, pay. Please, distract me. And you pay. Distract my life. Pay. Distract my life. Pay. Your data finished. They distract me more. Pay. Enjoy. Distract me. That's what people are doing today. Unconsciously. Except for those who are doing productive work. Who know that this is the tool of my trade. A few people who know that today's work, a lot of things today happens on the internet and everything. I understand that. Please don't think I, I, I don't know about that. There are certain things that I work with. I have my own tools. I shut down many things. I stay with my tools. I intentionally cut off my YouTube at a particular point. I discovered that the, what they call it now? Notification. Notification. Every spot in Papam, Pum Pum. You, I, I almost knew the no, latest things that will be happening among man of God, men of God, those that are arguing, quarreling. I say, God, this is not the life I want. I don't want to be watching the quarrel of others and their arguments. This pastor is talking about that one. Ah, that one. Another blogger will now come out and say, see what man of God said about that. I say, ah, ah, ah. Who will really shame me? I know my way. No, 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 no. I have an auto switch. My wife knows it. Every season of my life, there's an auto switch. Something taps me and say, wake up. Where are you going to? And that day, everybody around me will wake up. I will disturb you in the office. I will, I will start calling everybody like a mad person. What are we doing? Why, 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 they will be wondering that. We're talking, we're no, 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 no. Everybody stand up now. It's automatic. You must have that automatic propeller that turns your heart and say, what are you doing? Time is not waiting. May God create in you an automatic propeller that will propel you to your destiny. That will put the caution whenever you are wasting time. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your future depends on what you learn to ignore or what you focus on. Distractions are after our attention and we must not give in. Number two source of distraction, wrong relationships. Please pay attention. You see, I'm not, I, the word of God is penetrating your heart already. By the time you leave here, the power of God's word would have done wonders in your life. Amen. Remember how we started. Be not as fools, but as what? Wise. When wisdom speaks, you listen. Any person who disregards wisdom will end up in the pit of foolishness and regret. Nobody here will end up in that pit. Amen. Wrong relationships that introduce you to vices. They are Satan's distractions to mess up your life and make a mess of your destiny. Relationships that will introduce you to drugs. This one has become another potent weapon in the hand of Satan. Remember the goal of Satan is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Satan knows that your life will, knows what your life will look like without drugs. But his plan is to ensure that you never become the person God has ordained that you will be. Why will I allow you? A young guy has been struggling with graduating. All his siblings and the younger ones have graduated. From time to time, they have to be rehabilitating him. Because he's now, he's now a problem to the family. Every money they make, they will invest it in rehabilitation. Every money they make, they reverse it. Yeah. All the other people have left. All of them have left. Why? Satan has distracted. Satan has put a first full stop, a bus stop on his destiny. Anyone that is in any bus stop, God has not ordained for your life. I declare by the hand of the Lord, you are coming out of that place in the name of Jesus. I gave you a picture of this guy. Do you have it? Drugs. This was this magic fashion. This is 57 year old man. He's not, he's not 95. Old. He's 57 years old. Towards the end of his life, Magic Fashek came and was trying to announce to people that Kai, the worst thing that can happen to anybody is to be hooked by drugs. The worst thing that can happen. That's what some other people sit on now and they're enjoying it. Mujai. Hey, if you eat life, life finish, you die. Look at this young guy with all his teeth complete, straight, perfect, handsome, with some solid, solid dexterity in music. Until Satan came, they moved him out of this zone and transferred him to another zone. And he connected with the God of wickedness. And by the time he started doing drugs, he got hooked. This 57 years old when he died, 
and look at what somebody is looking at at 57. Looking like my great grandfather of 105. That's what drugs do, will do. Your liver, your lungs, your kidneys, everything, everything begins to die. It is a distraction. Tell anybody it's a distraction. Yes. Satan has seen what that lady will be, what that guy will become. If I leave this one, the intelligence will be too much. And you know what? Many of the time people push into drugs, they will ultimately they want to get inspiration. Naturally, they are intelligent people actually. Satan is now telling them there is more. There's something I can add. There is something. Instead of to be high on the most high, they decide to be high on drugs, on ice, on everything. Some years back, a young boy came to me and sat down. You were sweating. And he said, Pastor, I have drunk, I have, I have smoked ice, four millionaire. I said, it's a lie. He showed me the account. He said, four millionaire, ice move him. Yeah. At that point, the doctor had already told him the state of his liver and kidney. And he said, I want to give my life to Christ. I said, wow, guy. Guy. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord i've never seen a happily married woman that does drugs if you're a lady here you are you are making a mistake you you, are, you, you because say if you know you're going to date me you do what i do and you start he will never marry you if he marries you i will give you this pulpit go and do church in your house never two drug addicts have never married i've never seen it anywhere they will never. Your time will soon expire. The Bible says, Awake, O thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Yes, Come out! Because it's a web of destruction. The devil knows. Do you know that any time a lady begins to take drugs also, he has a way of passing the same thing. The traits and the taste of it will be passed into the child. You don't know what drug addiction does. I've taken my time to do some study. The same problem, the part of the brain that drug addiction holds and drunkenness and addictions is dangerous. It will finish everything, eat it up. It will be eating it up like this, like, a, like what they call it now, like grasshopper. Grasshopper, locust, eating up something. Distraction. Why? If God opens to everyone to see the future of that guy, that girl, that Satan has caught in the web of destruction of drugs, you will cry. Some of them are supposed to be people that will be, you know, very, very influential and impactful people on the face of planet Earth. But the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Number three, I won't take them, just listen to me, just follow me tonight. Are you being blessed tonight? Yes, yeah. Immoral living. That's another area Satan distracts people. That's another area Satan distracts people. Husband and wife. Be very careful. Satan wants to destroy a marriage. He wants them to have a divorce. He will not start with divorce. He will start with minor quarrels. They will start quarreling. Then they will enter prolonged malice. Do you understand? Like two weeks together, nobody's talking to anybody. Three weeks. Then as soon as prolonged malice comes, he will now open the guy's eyes to see the secretary. Or he will open the lady's eyes to start seeing the neighbor. Neighbor, neighbor. Chile, Kufumi, neighbor. Satan is a very stupid idiot. He's a bastard. He does not do, he will not go straight to the point. He's distract a lot of flies. The first fly will come and you think it's only that one. As you are doing like this, you see a bigger fly. Zoom. By the time you know it, all the things are everywhere. By the time he has entered the web and he's out and they are about to settle, and announce to the husband that eh, during the time we were quarreling, you know, this is what I did. Satan will say, Momo, bit more. Immediately the man hears, Pam, we are get out. No more, court, no more settlement again. This is the end of Solomon Grand. Because that's the original plan. The plan is divorce. But let's start with these minor arguments. Then let's distract. Let's put the spirit of lust. So that at the end of the day, when they get to the point where they're supposed to settle, they would have made many mistakes through their distractions that will not be settled. They will now say, We have irreconcilable differences. One will chase a thousand. Two will put 10,000 to flies. Why will I allow them? If me, I'm the devil, I will not allow you. If I'm the devil, I can't allow you. No, no one of you will succeed in this ministry. I will finish everybody. Uh -uh. We two will not grab it. Correct. I wrote a tract when I was on campus for a fellowship and I wrote it, if I were the devil. All the things I would have done, I would do it well. I will hook you with drugs. I will hook you with wrong relationship from 100 level. 
I will tie you so much that you will get plenty zeros, your parents will reject you. No, 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 no. You need to know how to act devil well if you want to be devil. Why would you leave them when you know that you have no place again? They, you don't know Satan doesn't have any other assignment. The Bible says he goes to and fro, seeking for who to devour. And that's the person you want to open up to. The Bible says who you should do what? Resist steadfastly, casting down all imagination and every high thing. As the thought is coming, you say, shh, bring it down. Not this life. Not this place. This is the place of focus. This is the place of greatness. This is the place of impact. No devil can come to this place. Is anybody getting what I'm saying here right now? God is speaking to somebody because everybody will come out of any kind of distraction. In the name of Jesus. If Satan's goal is to destroy a person here, one of the ways he will use sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is a very bad one. You are not married, you are packed to the house. Our wife, our wife, you need to. <laughs> okay, then bad you look for. You now wear big top. You wear the boy's big top and you're going to come and like this. <laughs> ah! You are coming out in the name of Jesus. The love of God will break through your heart in the name of Jesus. Even that relationship will not work again in the name of Jesus. Any relationship that will end your life, that will make your parents regret, that will make you cry, I declare we end in the name of Jesus. You are more important than rubbish relationship. Are you, are you being blessed by my message? Say, Pastor, can you tell me, Pastor, we love you, we love you. Any relationship that is dragging your spiritual life, since you entered, your spiritual life has gone down. Others are growing, you are sinking. I like that thing. Somebody say fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey. Hey. All the glorious children that God has put inside your loins. Any unnecessary attackment that say they will not come out. That all of them will be wasted by abortion. Somebody say fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. Any mistake you have made that the devil is holding against you, the mercy of God will visit you today. The love of God will find you out today. God will jealously snatch you out of the devourer's mouth. In the name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 7, let's just look at that very fast. NLT, Proverbs chapter 7 from verse 1. Proverbs 7, 1. You're going to read very fast. Are you being blessed tonight? Should we close and go home? Follow my advice, my son. Always treasure my commands. Go ahead. We have to be fast. Obey my commandments and live. Guard my instructions as you guard your own eyes. What I'm saying today, guard my instructions. I beg you, guard my instructions. I beg you, guard it. I'm not talking like a man who came from where they just wrote something. I came from the, from the cooking room of heaven with this message for somebody's destiny to be changed. Are you getting what I'm saying here now? Angels prepared the message, instructed that in this year, you must teach about distraction. I have things that God told me when I went to meet with him that these things must be heard so that many lives will be cut out of the web that Satan has put them. And I know in my heart that this word will penetrate your heart and give you life in the name of Jesus. Tie them on your fingers and remind, as a reminder, write them deep down in your world, heart. Go ahead, go ahead. Love wisdom like a sister. Make insight a beloved member of your world, family. Go ahead, go ahead. Let them protect you from an affair with an immoral woman. From listening to the flattery of a promiscuous woman. While I was at the window of my house, looking through the curtains, I saw one naive young man. Distractions. And one in, and one in particular who lacked... Any person that the devil is trying to eat your sense... I declare that the Lord and the Holy Ghost will restore sense to you. Amen. Spiritual sense restored to you. Amen. Biblical sense restored to you. Amen. Destiny sense restored to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He was crossing near the street, near the house of an immoral woman, strolling down the path to her word house. It was at twilight in the evening as deep darkness fell. The woman approached him, seductively dressed and slashed of hearts. Distraction. Someone say distraction. That's distraction. 
What else will you call distraction if this one is not distraction? Samson had his destiny announced by an angel. An angel appeared and gave his mother prescription for his life. They wrote it and said, you, madam, you are not going to take a hot drink. Do you understand? She said, yes. This is your son. When he gives it to him, you will not place his hair. You will not touch his hair. He has to be locked. He said, yes. Everything, the prescription was so clear. Nobody in the scripture, including Jesus, there was not much details like that. Prophecy was come, but something's own was that. The mother met the angel, they discussed, they dialogued, they didn't hear everything so clear. Then distraction started coming. All of a sudden, we see that Samson was distracted. It was not the first time. The mother started warning him. Another person called and said, Samson, stop this now. Samson, you can't do like this now. And Samson kept saying, what's that? Why are you disturbing me? Let me, eat my, let me enjoy myself. What am I doing? He's like, should I not enjoy myself? As a young person, what will I be doing? The Bible says it was in the destiny of Samson to deliver the whole of the nation of Israel from the hand of the Philistines. In other words, he was a warrior. He was born that way. When the Spirit of God comes upon Samson, all of a sudden, he will pick up anything and he will tear it apart. One day, Samson went to sleep with the prostitute. They locked him in the city. He went and he carried the gates, the gates, street gates, not your compound gates, street gates. He removed the pillar of the gate like this and he put it on his shoulder and he took it to the mountain. And he told all the security guys and the big guys in the streets, talk about being in the big gate, brother. They, how would they carry the gate? Pillars. He carried it only him because of the grace and the anointing that he had. But when distraction came, then distraction came. Delilah did the first one. He did not see it. She did the second one. He did not grab it. Aya. 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 I don't know if this, this message is the third one for somebody. Who, I don't know if this message is the third one you are hearing. I pray, may God open your eyes in the name of Jesus. She did it. It was so easy to get. Because at the last time, the first one they did, he go, he go, I said, oh, Samson, you don't love me, you don't love me. If you know you love me, if you know you love me. Love her. You love her. If you know you love me, if you know you love me. And Samson kept on going like a goat. She was the brash, rebellious type. Never content to stay at home. She is often in the streets and market. Any lady that is carrying her bag to your house weekend is causing you trouble. Put it back by down in the end. You see? Weekend, they carry bag. You should be happy. You will send money. Lord Shobe, Lord Shobe, Lord Shobe. Congratulations. Wife duties. Listen. Listen. If you are hearing my voice and that's where you are, the mercy of God is locating you. That's why you are hearing this message. The Bible says, whom the Lord loves, he corrects. And any person that the Lord loves, he will chastise. If some people heard this thing that you have heard, they will not have died. In this church, some years back, a young lady died here. Now came, she has done one of the coach, what left one of our training. And somehow, somehow, even her sister did not support the guy she was with. Everybody, she just kept on pressing. It was her dead body on the road. You think my heart is happy? No devil can tell me not to preach it. I have suffered the loss. I have suffered the loss. The neighbors are complaining. You people are always quarreling, fighting. Yet yeah, they refuse. We don't know till today. We can't really explain whether it was a car that hit her in the morning when she was coming, or somebody carried her and dropped her. We can't explain. No explanation. Any devil that has vowed to cause anybody's life to expire, I declare in the name of Jesus, God will snatch you out of the hand of that thing. Your life is important. Your destiny is important. Greatness is inside of you. You can't allow the devil. Tell yourself, I will never allow the devil. Never. Never. She is often in the streets and markets, soliciting at every corner. She threw her arms around him and kissed him. And with a brazen look, she said, I have just made peace offering and fulfilled my vow. You are the one I love. You are the one I've been looking for. I came out to find you, and here you were. Hey. Oh, Pari. <laughs> she composed songs. She, she joined Anchor immediately. And Anchor the guy's destiny like this. It's not our own Anchor, though. It's not our own Anchor. Though. Another one. My bed is spread with beautiful blankets. We call out sheets of Egyptian linings. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloe, and cinnamon. Come, let's drink our fill of love until morning. Let's enjoy each other's caresses. My husband is not at home. He's away on a long trip.
He has taken a wallet full of money with him and would return later till this later this month. So she seduced him with her pretty speech and enticed him with her flattery. Now, this is the woman doing it, but most of the times in this generation, it's as if it's the guys that are doing it. Uh, so that I want you to be sounding the other way in your ear too, like this. Come balance. She followed him at once, like an ox going to the slaughter. He was, he was like a stag caught in a trap, awaiting the arrow that will pierce his heart. He was like a bird flying into the snare, a cage, little knowing it would cause him the whole of his destiny. I don't know what the fate of that man would have been, how great he would have been, but the trap was set. Distractions are traps. Distractions are traps. Any trap that is waiting to catch you, any trap that the devil has vowed, that all the money is wasted on your life, all the investment you have made, giving back to your children, that one woman will tie you down and tie your destiny. I declare you are breaking out of that trap in the name of Jesus. So listen to me, my sons, and pay attention to my words. Don't let your heart stray away towards her or him. Don't wander down her path or his path. For he or she has been the ruin of many. Many men have been, obviously is a trap now. In other words, her, her goal is not even to enjoy the whatever. Her goal is to send them, she's Satan's agent to be delivering the people. So yeah, uh, you need one tonight. She's not saying yes. She said, oh, yeah, I'll give you one. I met people who, sleep, I met guys who, in counseling time, they know, the guy, the day he slept with the girl, he knew that that was the day something left him. Everything he would do will never work. Until he said, Pastor, I'm going to die. I want to kill myself. I said, don't kill yourself. If you repent and you are sincere, God will help you. God will help you. Her house is the road to the grave. How can somebody's house be the road? The bed, cinnamon, Egyptian linen. The Bible says that it is what? Grave. Her bedroom is the den of death. There are many, many, many married men and women that are finding themselves here. Not only singles. Because somebody will say, I made them talk to the single way, way. Both single and married. Satan is going very hard now. Uh -uh. I said the other day that the boy sat down and he said he's running away. I'm running away. I say, uh, in my mind, I say, uh, is it my body rough like this? It's not about him or the age. It's about one mistake that will make all the story of his destiny to be covered and enter one cup and they will forget the person for life. There are many names you don't know today. They were filling stadiums. They are gone. They are gone. Distraction. Somebody say distraction. The same thing. There's a video I sent to you yesterday or the first day. With somebody chained, pornography, 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 pornography. You see pornography? I told you that pornographic sites are making more money. They are, I didn't tell you. They are making more money than the um, Netflix, so the three social media major players, Netflix, um, X, and one other social media. They are making money more. That means they have more traffic and more visitors. And people are distracted. They are caught in that web. And you know the bad thing about pornography? is that to leave it is difficult. The guy is there. The screen has held his life. There's a spirit behind the screen. Mawo, mawo, ole file. He will watch tonight. By the time he's done, he will go back. Pornography is a demonic stronghold built by Satan to keep people enslaved. You must make up your mind and say, I have no business with it. I have no... If you are the one that is clicking everything that you are not supposed to click, make up your mind and say, I'm not going there. You know why? This is the doorway that Satan uses to put people trapped permanently in even masturbation. Then the end of the result is that it must end in where? Fornication. Fornication is not the end. There will be an STD. There will be a co-infection. There will be something. Anything should happen so that the life of the person will finish. The ultimate goal of Satan is to steal, to kill that destroy is generation. Uh, the thing will pass. Why? Because anytime parents begin to make mistakes and it becomes a cycle in their life, it has passed into their system and it will be the biggest temptation that Satan will bring to their children. Listen, I'm the one teaching you this. Listen to me very well. If I tell you this thing and you don't understand it, I don't know who will tell you. This is how it works. Phys biologically, things are transferred from parents to children. Mentally also, whoever trains a child package their mindset into that child. Spiritually, is is harder. Especially when you're not born again, demons will supervise and ensure that all the places you entered, all the things that you did one time or the other, after you are long gone, 
they will start waging war with the children but I pray that God will arise everyone here you will become a godly seed in the name of Jesus somebody might not have given you the best platform but you will give somebody the best platform I say you will give another generation the best platform in the name of Jesus I have many things I don't want to be distracted by uh, I want to just because I know pastor is going to be on his way he was caught he's caught in traffic so you had you are distracted but you know how to receive forgiveness of sin for your distraction Jesus will forgive you but your journey will drag yes you'll not be able to reach the height God loves you he'll forgive you but your journey will drag there are certain things that you should enter you will not enter he said I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and give you your inheritance the problem with rising and falling is that you can't lay hold of your inheritance that's the problem and that's why you must make up your mind he says having done all to stand stand therefore those that serve the devil they serve him very well why is it that those that serve God they are doing partial service partial contact partial contact why say so I will never be distracted another major means of distraction is wrong means of getting wealth Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 11 like a partridge that had hatched eggs it it did not lay look at it he said as a partridge that broods but does not hash so is the one who gets rich but not by right it will leave him in the midst of his days and at the end he will be a fool another translation so I can move fast like a party that hatches eggs she had not laid so are those who get their wealth by unjust means at midlife they will lose their riches and in the end they will become poor old fools the word is enough for the wise after 20 days of glory every distraction that is coming your way I declare they are extinguished in the name of Jesus temptations are distractions temptations always say temptation is a distraction Yes. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the temptation to put them in fire was a big distraction. Job's temptation was a distraction. Why? Because of that temptation, Satan told him, he said, cause God and do what? Die. If Job had caused God and die, he would have died a wretched man too. He would have died with his boil and everything on his body. He would have died like that. So many times you are tempted. Satan will be telling you many things. Don't listen to the devil. You might be going through a situation in your life right now. It's a distraction. Focus on God more. The Bible says, Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. I don't know what you're going through. And the devil is beginning to question, where is God? If God is there, why are you going through this? If you know you're a Christian, if, if God is God, where is God? Tell him, I know that my Redeemer liveth. The Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said something. They said, we know that our God will deliver us. But in case he does not show up, we will die serving our God than live bowing to Nebuchadnezzar. You must make up your mind in this day and age that you will prefer to die serving God. I would rather die serving God than succumb to Satan's pressure of temptation. That's why when I was, before I got married, I told God, I said, God, the day I sleep with another woman, let leprosy come over me. I would rather, I want to die than to do it. You don't understand. Those who know where they are going to, they know the discussions they have with God. Jesus was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. While he was fasting and praying, you see what happened, you saw what happened there. All of a sudden, Satan came. Just imagine that Jesus Christ fell for the same of Satan. Oh my darling, to Jerusalem. He will not be carrying back up and down. His wife will not be following him. You know, say, ah, <coughs> Papa J, Alpha. He came to be a redeemer. Then he will die as a subject one to be redeemed. It would have, everything would have been lost. But the Bible says that the son of man was tempted in all ramifications, yet without sin. And that's why he became the author of eternal salvation that you and I benefit from now. Every devil that is trying to use one temptation or the other to rob you so that you will choose your mind of God. I declare, may God strengthen your heart. May God give you faith. May God give you courage. In the name of Jesus. Delayed expectation can be a distraction. You're expecting a child. They will now distract you and say, let's go to social place. You now start consulting with demons. You're expecting a job. And because of that, Satan is trying to tell you that if God is faithful, since you have been serving God, why don't you have a job? Eh? You're expecting to be healed. And in this program now, you have been coming. I say, ah, I say, ah, but I've been coming since now. Satan will now say, see, if, you, if there is healing in this place, you should have been healed. Look at you. If I were you, just go and drink one concussion. Just go and do one thing. Just go and bow to one goat and, and, and shinab what? A distraction. Someone say distractions. Let me quickly finish. Pe pe persecution. Someone say persecution. 
is a distraction. Yes, direct antagonism to your faith. Many people allow that to distract them. Today, they are in Satan's web. A guy whose parents refused him to serve God. Like you are coming here now, then you go home. Then your parents say, if you go out of this again, I will deal with you. I don't want you. Oh, go back, Lord, check it. Go back, Lord, check it. And I'm not saying, then you now got angry. I say, eh, 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 I said, not do this one. No, 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 you not let me do it. No, no, no. Then sit down and now say, sit down in the house. And do, just do another one. Surprise them. Show them Pepe. Then all of a sudden, you change from coming to church. Because of distraction, you now said, ah, let me follow them to club on Friday today. And you know, when people start going to club, their parents will lose their power. When they come to church, that's when they have energy. You that you are born again, they are shouting, your younger sister is going to the club, everybody is keeping their mouth. It's an attack. Did you hear what I just said? It's what? It's an attack. You have to be bold. Especially many of us that have become adults, you are 18 years old, and they are still saying, they sit down there, you are not going to any church. You have to be bold and say, please, if I die, I die. Because you will not be here all your life to watch what my life will become. I must pay my price now. And guess what? The earlier you start paying your price, the more in the bank of your track record with God. It's better to start on time. Is anybody getting what I'm saying today? So, I think Pastor Gideon probably is around. So let me just start wrapping up. So that I will just share with us briefly and close. Then finally, to close, confrontation and oppositions. If you mind opposition, you will lose your position. Yes, unnecessary opposition. Nehemiah chapter 4 from verse 1 to 5. Somebody's been blessed already. Somebody's life is changing already. Nehemiah chapter 4 from verse 1. He said, but, but it, was, it happened. When Sambalat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, now there's a guy called Nehemiah. Nehemiah was trying to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem because he had seen that everything had gone wrong. So he went to take permission from his boss, the king. He was a cup bearer. Then the boss said, you can go and build the walls of Jerusalem. Then two guys, Sambalat and Tobias, started attacking him. They were trying to distract him by all means from doing everything that God had called him to do. So he started saying it. He said, but when it happened, Sambalat heard that we were building the wall, that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. Go ahead to verse 5. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what are these feeble Jews doing? We will, forti will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones of the heap and rubbish? Stones that are burned down. Uh -huh. Now, Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him and he said, whatever they build, even if a fox goes upon it, it will break it down and their stone walls. Hear, yeah, O oh God, he started praying, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own head and give them a plunder to a land of captivity. Do not cover their iniquity and do not let their sin be blotted out before them for they have provoked you to anger before the builders. Now listen as I wrap up. As soon as the side saying that to Sambalat and Tobias, Sambalat and Tobias were, they expected that Nehemiah would be what? Distracted. But guess what Nehemiah was doing? If you read the next verse in Nehemiah chapter, Nehemiah chapter 6 from verse 1, the Bible says Nehemiah refused to be distracted. Somebody say refused to be distracted. Now, it happened when Sambalat and Tobiah, Geshem and Arab, and the rest of the armies heard that he had brewed the world, that they were, that they were no break feet in it. Though at the time, I had not hung the doors in the gate. Uh -huh. Then Sambalat and Geshem sent one, saying to me, come, let us go meet together among the villages in the plain of Onon. But they thought to do me harm. Go ahead. So I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. That's where I will stop. I am doing a great work so that I cannot do what? I am doing a great work so that I cannot do what? When they bring drugs, it go to you. You say, I'm doing a great work so I cannot do what? When they bring immorality and platform, everything, you say, I'm doing a great work so I cannot do what? Any temptation, any distraction, somehow, somebody's bringing a distraction that will get your life off. You will look at the person eyeball to eyeball. I'm not ready to live in bitterness and unforgiveness. I am doing a great work with my destiny. I cannot come down. Rise up. I'm doing a great work. I cannot come down. I'm doing a great work. I cannot come down. I'm doing a great work. I cannot come down. I am doing a great work. I can hear you. I'm doing a great work. I am doing a great work. There is prophecy over me. I am doing a great work. My future is bright and I cannot do anything about what you're saying. I'm doing a great work. Every distraction ordained to make a mess of your life and your destiny distractions by oppositions those that are opposing everything around your life every distraction of immorality every distraction of drugs every distraction of adultery fornication every distraction of social media 
every distraction from negative friends that offer you negative advice may the lord god almighty shut down the distractions in the name of jesus i say the distractions are shut down in the name of jesus i am doing a great work i cannot come back i am doing a great work sambalat carried his sword on one hand and he held the shovel on the other hand and he told everybody put a sword by your side if they come we'll finish them any devil that shows up will finish them why we are doing a great work we cannot come down see the destiny that i am seeing see the glory see the light see the shining i am doing a great work pastor mavis they are calling you they said i am doing a great i cannot come down lift up your hands and say jesus thank you for this word begin to bless the name of the lord begin to bless the name of the lord begin to bless the name of the lord tonight i'm doing a great work my destiny is at work my destiny is a construction going on this is a construction site of jesus i cannot come down this is a construction site of jesus i cannot come down god is working on me i cannot come down god is building something in my life i cannot come down there's a great work that god is doing in my life i cannot come down somebody is calling you from nowhere hello i cannot come down I am doing a great work. That's a distraction. 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 I'm doing a great work. I cannot come down. I'm doing a great work. I cannot come down. I am doing a great work. God is doing a work on this side. I'm not coming down. We are not stopping the construction of my destiny. We are not stopping the aligning of my destiny. We are not stopping the reposition of my life. I'm doing a great work. I cannot come down. There's prophecy over me. I cannot come down. God has invested so much in my life. It cannot be a waste. I cannot come down. I'm doing a great work. There's a child of destiny inside of me. There's a marriage of destiny inside of me. There's a global business inside of me. I am a global voice. I cannot come down. I cannot come down. I cannot come down. I cannot give up now. I cannot give up Somebody, God is bringing you out now. The fire of the Holy Ghost will bring you out of that distraction. Every wave of distraction. Shama ya 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 ya. Listen, one prayer point before I hand over. You are going to declare every web of destruction. Shout it loud, say every web of destruction. Planned by Satan to waste my life. Today, in the name of Jesus, my eyes are open. I break out of the web. 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 Lift up your voice. I'm going to pray right now. I cannot be distracted by pornography, by masturbation, by sexual sin, by wrong association, by weaknesses of the flesh, by bitterness, by malice, by unforgiveness. I break out. I break out. I break out! 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 My destiny is glorious. I cannot be cut short at my prime. I cannot be stopped. No. 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 In Jesus' 
mighty name we pray i kneel upon this holy altar and i pray for you every devil that has bowed to silence you before your time every web of destruction every trap that has been set to shut down your destiny today i declare your soul has escaped in the name of jesus you escape in the name of jesus you escape in the name of jesus i declare you are free you will never be distracted again the boldness and the courage to break out of that ungodly association what will my friends say how will they feel your destiny has nothing to do with those friends if they are not going to where god has ordained the courage to look away from those friends arise and fulfill your destiny receive that courage in the name of jesus it is well with you listen just as pastor Gideon comes you can stand up i made up my mind at the point i left instagram because i knew in my heart that unnecessary competition and comparison can close down a ministry and was, you wake up on monday morning you'll be seeing things and your head will just be going up like da, 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 da. i say ah, where did they bring these people from how did this one think about i just told myself before i die before my time i'm not going here again let me go and be doing let me go and be busy there is a great work that i have to do i'm not coming down instagram was my coming i said i'm not coming down i shut it off shut off many things and i gave myself for this one thing i do i press on towards the mark of the price of the high calling no competition no comparison with all heart of gladness and joy i learned by the spirit to do your work with gladness and rejoicing and here i am celebrating myself today that i have learned nothing anybody has in this world moves me i'm excited i celebrate it with a heart of joy i refuse to be caught in the web of bitterness competition all manner of dirty things any web that you know by yourself that this thing is draining you how you know a distraction to dare you mentally it can affect your mental health so much it will be wasting your time they will be beating you in the relationship and you still be there it's a distraction everybody's out today in the name of jesus Amen. beloved we don't have so much of time but god's servant is here so he has to share with us and prepare our hearts are you ready tonight are you sure that you are ready tonight With a wonderful ovation, we want to receive the ministry of God's servant. Pastor Gideon. Ba. An amazing servant of God. Put your hands together. Thank you, sir.